When building large and complicated single page applications, it's often difficult to get the team on the same page about design and back end and front end and everything moves at different speed. If only there was a way to kind of separate things out so that different parts of the team could move at different speeds. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, I wanted to introduce a tool called Storybook. I'm hoping to make this one in a series of episodes about Storybook because I'm pretty enthusiastic about it. Uh, and it's been something that I have been wanting to kind of get into and explore for a little while and I'm finally finding some time to do it. Um, so let me take you through the idea of what this is. Uh, so when you're building a web application, you often end up with uh, a bunch of components on your screen that you're looking to, to have people fill in. So maybe they're text boxes, maybe they're just sections on the page. Uh, it could be anything really. And as we build more and more complicated web applications, you start building kind of more and more complicated components. Um, so I do some view development. And with that, I use uh, this fantastic library called, oh my gosh, am I gonna get it right today, Beautify. Uh, and it provides kind of the basic controls that you would expect to see that have been sort of built out by every control maker over the last 30 years. So date pickers and time entry tools and all of those things that you would expect to see. Um, but those controls are very granular. So I don't really get um, a lot out of them other than here is a control for picking a username or here is a control for people to enter text into. They're what the I'm really looking... basic building blocks, right? Like... Exactly. So what I'm looking to do is build some like reusable components at a slightly higher level than that so that people can reuse entire bunches of controls together. Uh, so Storybook is a tool for helping you do that. So the idea behind Storybook is that it is a no nonsense, no stuff around it way of embedding controls on a page so you can build up a library of controls that you're going to be using inside of your application. So this is where I come to that bit of uh, it allows your team to move at different speeds for different parts of the team. So if you have somebody who has time left over or somebody whose expertise are really front end centric and they're not going to be working on the back end stuff or this business logic that you're waiting for, you can have people stand up a bunch of tools. So when you come into a design, then you can look at the design and go, okay, well, we're going to split our controls here, 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 and here. And that's going to be our reusable building blocks that we can use throughout the website. Uh, and then you can embed those into a storybook and you can experiment and change and use those inside a storybook. So what I have here is a brand new storybook project. This is just a storybook website here. Uh, and if you go and install Storybook, which is as simple as running uh, an NPM script to install it, uh, then you end up with basically a page that looks like this. So this is Storybook running locally. Uh, and they have put in some helpful examples here of stuff that you can take a look at here. So this is an example of a button control. So this is a very basic control that you might have on your web page. Uh, and then over here, you can take a look at how would this look with some different properties associated with it. Um, you can do something as big as say, hey, here's the header on our website. What does this look like when you're logged in versus when you're logged out? Um, or even you can do an entire page. This page happens to use the header control. So you can see the difference between logged in and logged out on that. So as a user of this, what I would end up doing is I would start building out a control. So I started here building out a login control. So I can put my username and password in here and I can build this out entirely in isolation. So I have the little dot .view file over here, close that bar. Uh, and anytime that I make changes over here, it's just like it was in the application itself. So uh, it'll do like hot reloads of everything here and it'll allow me to go through and kind of build out what I want my control to look like and how I want it to, to interact with the page. Uh, I this is a V bot. I don't know if that's right. Button? I think it was a V button or a V, yes, maybe it's a button. Oh, 
maybe mm. VBTN. We're just guessing. Yeah. Only there was some kind of book that could tell us. Yes, some sort of documentation. Yeah. All right, we've got that. There you yeah. go. Um, so then I can go and I can make all these changes over here that I would normally be making in the application itself. Uh, and I can reflect the style and the changes and, and all of that stuff and build out these individual components. Uh, and I can set the, the outputs and the inputs on these. So if I needed to, to set up a, a property on this, I could set up like a props this. Let's pass in like a starting value or something and then And then I, I can set this up so that it is it is built up inside of my page here. So if I go back to my login stories here, I can put that property in, which I've forgotten the name of already. Uh, starting value. Of course, I'm value. I didn't test that before I did this, so I was sort of hoping it would work. I might be passing something through incorrectly there. Um, but the idea is that you can build up these components in total isolation and you don't have to worry so much about how other people are using the components, how they're going to be used inside the application because you can just kind of push this stuff through like this and build up components independently. Uh, so there are methods in place here for how you can mock out um, requests with it. So I'm going to do a couple more episodes. I'm going to take a look at mocking out requests with this and how to pass in properties and how to do styling and things like that so that we can see things like this is what it looks like in dark mode and light mode and those sorts of things. Uh, and then when you're building your actual application, then you can just go and use these view components or React components or whatever the component library is that you're using and build up your application out of these larger Lego bricks rather than the smaller ones. So the this login view here would be the one that I actually use in my application? Right. So right now, I, I don't have very much in this project here, but I just have it pointed to a login view locally. Uh, but if you take a look at the login view stories here, I just have it including the local one. But if I needed to go back up to like controls something, uh, okay. I could go and use the ones that are actually in the project. So this is just a way of building out a, a control library, um, which is really useful because a lot of times I run into projects and we'll be like two months into the project and we're like, ah, oh, do we have somewhere in the site where we do like picking users? And then we'll be like, oh, I think it's on such and such a page. Whereas if we have pulled everything out into Storybook, then it's really quick to go through and be like, okay, user selection, that's this user selection widget right here. This is how you use it. Um, and you can add documentation to all of this stuff too. Um, so there's a little documentation tab here. You can fill in some documentation around here. I don't know if any of these examples have it. Not so much, but we'll we'll cover that off too. Yeah, because it's not only finding where it was already done within your application, but often you end up in a scenario where like two different people, developers have done it a couple different ways, and you have like the component basically implemented multiple places because people didn't realize it was it was already done somewhere. Yeah, this should help just by surfacing it and making it more discoverable. Hopefully, you avoid some of that duplication of effort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this works for pretty much any of the modern single page application frameworks. So I'm using Vue here, but I think it's actually written in React. So it was originally like a React tool, um, mm -hmm. but it'll do pretty much anything. Um, so Vue, a bunch of stuff I've never even heard of, Angular, Svelte, Ember. Cool. <laughs> cool stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing the the follow up videos on yeah, this. Yeah, forward to, to getting stuff working. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on this episode, and we will see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.